The other thing that I do like about this bag is, um, oh, shit. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually going to be filming a first impressions kind of mini review on the Chanel Deauville bag. I've been told that this is actually in the size small. I'm not 100% sure because when I looked at places like the Real Real and Fashion File, this size with, with the handle here and no top handle, ignore this, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, um, is actually in the medium size, but some people have told me that this is in fact the small Deauville. So whatever it is, um, we'll just refer to it as the small today, I guess. Uh, firstly, if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below. I talk all about luxury and fashion and a little bit of high street. Uh, also hit the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. This particular bag, I think that this is in fact from Chanel's Spring Summer 2019 um, or it's from Chanel's Cruise Collection 2019. So this is well over a year ago, I think. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's from those that collection. Um, it's actually a 27 series bag. I bought this pre-loved from um, Rakuten, which is a Japanese marketplace. It's like eBay, but it's the Japan version where it's got all the Japanese consignment stores. It was pre-loved, however, it was actually essentially new. It was like pretty much almost brand new condition. I couldn't see anything wrong with it. No marks, nothing. The only thing is that the hardware stickers were removed. So that's the only thing to say that it had maybe been used once or twice. Um, so this particular bag, first impressions from using it so far, it is lightweight. I found it really lightweight, comfortable on the shoulder. Um, sometimes would slip off the shoulder, not gonna lie, sometimes slipped off, but not a lot. Just occasionally one strap would kind of flop off. Uh, usually that's dependent on what you're wearing, how much weight is in the bag anyway. So that was probably one of the downfalls with this bag. Um, a lot of good things about it. I think that it looks really elegant. I think that it looks like a very classy sort of tote bag. Tote bags can look sometimes too casual. They can look very, like when you wear them, you look underdressed. They don't really dress up an outfit, a tote bag. Whereas this, I feel like it could, it doesn't like look like you're dressing down and it's not like the kind of bag that you see everywhere the Chanel Deauville is popular but it's not really something that you see when you're out and about what I do also like about this bag is that it's quite it's got a very big open compartment like it's not compartmentalized inside which I don't really like from a bag to be honest I don't like bags that have, I mean I do like compartments in bags but I don't like them where they kind of divide you in that middle there so that it affects what you can kind of put that's really large in your bag I like when there's just compartments on the sides of the bag, like just like that. So I do like the um, the actual interior of this bag. I think it's really nice. It is only cloth lined, so it's not leather lined in any way. This whole actual construction of the bag contains absolutely no leather other than the top, the handles here. That's another point that I wanted to add is that why I do particularly like this model is that it has leather on the chain strap, whereas the one with the top handle does not. However, I just found out that this season of Chanel, I think the 20p collection has come out with Deauville's with the top handle and they now have the leather strap on the chain so that's a fantastic feature that they've added. The other thing I like about this bag is that when you do buy it pre-loved it generally holds its value. Uh, if you're getting a good deal on it especially you can make a profit but otherwise even if you're just buying it pre-loved you're generally not going to lose money on reselling it because they go up in price. They are pretty much coming out every season but they continue to go up in price and the demand is still there. Now there are some cons to the bag and this is probably uh, more so to do with this bag in particular so I'm going to talk about the actual what it's made of so this is made of it's like a canvas it's like a cloth it's got bits of cloth thread in the bag it's got like raffia kind of straw like threaded through it's a really nice like it's a really beautiful craftsmanship like the detail that goes into it like that shiny lurex that sort of thing it's beautifully detailed like, how do I describe it? Like, it's just not just a basic leather tote bag. There is some fine detail to it that you can really appreciate it. So that's what's great. But however, the downfall is that these bags can, you know, they get marked up and they're harder to clean. You can't really even clean them yourself. They're not like a leather bag where you can go and get a leather wipe and clean it. They're not like a Louis Vuitton canvas where you can just get a fragrance-free baby wipe and wipe it down. They aren't like that. They do require more specialist care if you do happen to get them dirty, spill anything on the color transfer. It requires harder work. You pretty much can't do it yourself unless you buy the leather version, of course, of the Deauville. But we are just speaking specifically about this particular one. And I think that this is going to be relative to the fabric denim cotton kind of styles as well 
So yeah, that's probably the biggest downfall is that these are commonly made in some kind of canvas, fabric, raffia, you know, not leather. They're essentially made quite commonly in non-leather dovils. And those are harder to care for. They're cheaper than the leather dovils though. But yeah, I've found that so far I have already accidentally caused some very ex extremely mild color transfer. Like you, I will show you and you can't even see it. You cannot see it, that's how faint it is. But I know it's there because I can see it really close up. I can see, oh, yep, that wasn't there before. But essentially there's just some little light pink color transfer on the actual cotton parts of the bag. The cotton has actually grabbed to the pink dress that I was wearing from Zara. It's like an acid wash and apparently it wasn't color fast. I thought it would be. I thought only jeans would be a problem, but yeah, it transferred some of the pink. So that is the downfall with this bag is that it's not exactly the best when it comes to being carefree. It's not a carefree color. The fabric is not carefree. So that's the biggest con. The other con is that the handle can flop off your shoulder. It can fall off. Um, there is a solution to that. I have been speaking with a lady called Karen from um, Gummy, I think it's Purse Gummy Straps, silicone kind of jelly strap that you put inside the, like inside the strap, like you put it on the inside so when it latches onto your shoulder it kind of grips on. This bag didn't come with a top handle, but I have made my own top handle. I have ordered these like, they're, they're essentially like a big massive screw D-ring. So I'm going to bring it up close and hopefully it focuses in. Essentially these are big U-shaped um, D-rings that you screw in, they just pop off with the screw. So you unscrew them to take them off, unscrew them to, to latch it back on. And they're just kind of sitting on the bag in that part where the toggle is. So here, you will see that that's the toggle. And yeah, they're just sitting in that loop. And then these pearl straps, these are actually something that I sell on my eBay store. I sell nifty little handbag accessories on my eBay store. And these are just handmade pearl straps. They've got like the, the um, typical O-ring clasp and they're just clasped onto those like big D-ring things. They're technically called like a carabiner sort of clip, but they're not a typical carabiner where it latches like that. It worked really well as a top handle. That has actually completely changed the bag for me. However, I want to sell this bag and I have actually already sold it. So that's why I'm filming this video. I have sold it purely based on the fact that even though I absolutely love this color, I think this color is beautiful. I think that it is all an all year round color. I'm selling it because I think that I have made the wrong decision when it comes to tote, like the color of the tote bag. I'm not a tote bag person. This is the only tote bag that I own, like luxury tote bag. Uh, so if going forward, I don't think I would buy, want to buy two tote bags. I don't want to just go and buy another tote bag. So I have two because I'm just not really into tote bags. So I've decided that to sell this, and I have either the option of using it, the money to fund the Louis Vuitton on the go MM. I can go ahead and buy like a Louis Vuitton tote, like a totally MM or something like that. Um, like a pre-loved one. Or I can go ahead and buy a Chanel Deauville again, pre-loved, but in a dark color. Needless to say, I'm not saying that I wouldn't ever add this back to my collection in a light color like this or some kind of, this color exactly, or a light colored Chanel Deauville. I'm not saying that. I potentially would if the idea of a tote bag grows on me. So if I decide that I really start loving a tote bag, then I might want more than one. But at this stage, I'm still not in love. Like I'm still not really into tote bags. They're more of like a functional necessity that we need, but not something that I love when it comes to a luxury handbag. It's more like I need this because I need to carry more stuff and I have a baby on the way due in pretty much at the end of April, early May. I have a toddler, so I need a big tote bag. Like, I need one, it's a necessity. Other bags, styles that I really love, but tote bags isn't that style, because we all know what tote bags are. They're not something that I really love. And no, I do not consider my Birkin 30 a tote bag. I don't consider it a tote bag. It's a completely different thing. It is not like this. It is not a kind of bag that you carry on your shoulder and do that with and carries a lot. It is not like a, a big massive kind of it's just in a whole different realm i know that the birkin is technically considered a tote but to me in my eyes i don't see it as a tote but um yeah that's just kind of how i feel about totes i don't totally love them so that is why i am the kind of person right now that is saying i only want one tote bag in my life and i think i've chosen wrong when it comes to the colors for this particular color for my lifestyle 
yeah, I need something a bit more resilient. Overall, aesthetically as it looks, especially with this pearl top handle, I really love how it looks. It looks so, so, so good. And you know, it's kind of sad that I am selling it and that it's gonna go to a new home. It's, it's sad in that way, but the way I see it too is that it's that kind of style of bag that has it's a classic, it's gonna stay around. It is easy to find pre-loved in the resale market, especially from Japan, there is a lot available, especially like, you know, you see them even on Instagram being sold by reputable resellers. People sell these, they can sign them. So I know that there's always gonna be another one available in the future if I decide I wanna add it back in this kind of colorway. But hopefully that my opinions have helped you guys, have helped to shed light on, you know, if you're considering the Chanel Deville and you have a similar lifestyle to me, hopefully in some way it was helpful. You may just think, no, why are you selling it? But, you know, I just want to share my luxury journey in its entirety. I like to be open and honest with you guys. You do know that. So if you like this video and you like luxury videos in general, then please give it a thumbs up. And otherwise, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.